spot to buy glasses. So I have to improvise, because I've been waiting in line for 30 minutes and there are a lot of glasses. I can't believe the sun's about to go out. <laughs> I am a genius. The temperature is getting cooler and the sky is getting darker. That's a pretty dark sun. Wow. I looked at the sun today. Everything feels just a little bit desaturated. Also, here's Danny. <laughs> Danny, what is it like witnessing the moon eat the sun? <laughs> if you use your own hands to make a pencil, you can cast a shadow in the shape of the ellipse. And there it is. There's the maximum totality. And if you look away from it, everything looks pretty normal, except a little bit darker. I straight up skipped the beginning of class for this, so currently I'm walking to class 10 minutes late. Hey, Stephanie. So Stephanie, yes. have you ever been in my videos before? I can't remember. I've been in a couple. What's your major, Stephanie? I am graphic design with a minor in marketing. I want to ask like interesting intro questions. I'm not interesting though. <laughs> I feel like I'm really boring. I You're mean, not. I work in a residence hall. I have to talk to Oh people. yeah, Stephanie's an RA. All right, listen up. So we need to tape out these screens because they're wood first off and they're gonna warp when they get wet. This is really professional screen printing. You stop that! <laughs> Stephanie, your screen is taped. <laughs> Just a little bit. Hi. Hello. Hi. partnership. You guys, chances are, are going to understand that things are brewing or something's happening far before maybe I do. So what I urge you to do is to let us know. So if my protest was to disrupt business, would I be arrested? Well, that's a very specific question. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who were here last spring, you likely saw the campaign See It Here report. It's not uncommon that all of us turn to social media. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. I think the challenge we've run into, though, is when folks have used social media as an official reporting function. It causes us to lose some time to deal with situation. Well, first off, I would like to say that I'm really glad to hear that uh, the university is making the reporting system more accessible. However, a reporting system is reactionary. The question is, what is going on at BGSU to prevent incidents from happening in the first place? We are continuously having these issues, that means that there's a root cause that we are not uh, at all addressing. My whole position is where I get to really hear students' input and how they feel. And I know a lot of students, especially about people of marginalized identities, don't really feel comfortable speaking with the higher ups because when something happens, only, the only follow-up is usually an email and we'll provide you with these resources. But we need more programs geared towards the need of this. We need them in the residence lives. We need more programs. My name is Morgan and I have a political agenda. So I'm very active politically and because this vlog records what I'm up to, you're gonna see a lot of my political stuff. Yay! I believe that my art and my activism are inextricably linked and so I feel it's important to talk about both of those things because they're both very important to me. So, today I'm going to see an abortion doctor in Cleveland. Dr. Willie Parker is one of my personal heroes and he's having a talk today. Uh, so I'm gonna go see it. And it's gonna be great. I have Dr. Willie Parker's book 
right here. It's called Life's Work, and hopefully I'm gonna get it signed by him today. Willie Parker's whole thing is that abortion is actually a moral thing, and that having choice is a moral thing. He's very, very much a Christian. He's actually a born-again Christian, and a lot of people are really surprised that he does this kind of work with those beliefs. But if you read the book, it's super interesting in how he applies his faith. I highly encourage checking out his work, and if you're able to, he appears in the documentary called Trapped, and it's an excellent documentary. I love it. It's one of my favorites. I will link to that in the description, and I can't take my big camera to this event with me, so I'll be recording it on my phone. How we know we're getting close to where we need to be. <laughs> Gross people will guide us to the church we need to be at. Okay, I got the selfie on. Okay. I'm about to come and help you. I'm taking a video actually. Okay, so okay. we're taking a video. This is what it looks like when you're trying to take a picture and then when people stop talking on a video because they think you're taking a picture but it's actually a video. <laughs> so you see people moving around for a picture, mm -hmm. then you see them sitting still for a video. That makes sense, doesn't it? It's going so well. Uh, but uh, I love their shirt. These women are like down for uh, birth control and contraception and women controlling their reproduction. Mm -hmm. And to quote Jay-Z, I got 99 problems but I'm pregnant the same one. <laughs> Thank you very much. To the degree that this work has been difficult at all, it's been increasingly made so by people opposed to abortion, some of whom showed up outside tonight, to list and to state that they are opposed to abortion on account of moral grounds. And the moral grounds that they often raise are related to their particular religious understanding. And so that leaves many in our society, because they don't hear anything otherwise, to believe that abortion is a moral in general, and non-Christian in particular. I, as a Christian, was never taught that abortion was wrong. My personal religious conversion predates the whole pro-life, pro-choice narrative. But I also have never concluded that it was immoral for a woman to take care of herself. So it was also because of my Christian beliefs that I believe that the most important connection that you can have to a person who's not your family member and they need your help is to have to be one of compassion. <laughs> that's a big one. That's, that's bigger than Noah. <laughs> I'm a professor. His name is Eric Myers, and that's my dad's name. I just went ahead and asked him if I could call him Professor Papa. Can you explain what we did today? Today we cleaned our screens to make sure all the dirt and gross stuff got off of them. And we coated them with emulsion, which we will then put our fancy, fancy layers on and like burn light through and it's gonna be awesome. This will make no sense to non-art people. <laughs> we're gonna put some chemical stuff on it and then we're gonna use light to go through the chemicals. Better? Yeah. Working in the evening was a terrible idea. The office is completely empty. It's just me here. I like working with other people. I think I'm gonna get my shift changed to be in the morning. Like, I'll have to wake up super early. But at least I won't be alone. Hello, Paul. Hi, we have bubbles. This is a very good marketing gimmick. <laughs> Today was a really good day. Um, my work had an open house, and my I had a four-hour class this morning, but it was a really great class. I'll talk about it a bit more when I recap my week, but for now, I'm going to see my friends. <laughs> Maybe they're not home. Hi, Quinn. Hi, Morgan. Hi, DJ. Oh, hi, hey, what's up? <laughs> oh, f hi, Danny. 
What are you doing up there? I thought you guys were just playing normal Smash and then I heard my swap. It's an unlockable. You have to unlock it by um, putting files in your Wii. <laughs> but you know, it's there. <laughs> How have you been, DJ? Very good. Never better. Yeah. I'm not saying that ironically for once. Gem, I haven't introduced you in this video yet. <laughs> oh, this is a video? Yeah. Tell me a fun fact about yourself. Um, I read all of Bloodbound. I hate you. <laughs> Danny, what's it like up here in the ceiling dwelling? Um, you'll never take me alive, motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, I have no choice. He's got a gun. <laughs> Stop. I hate this. I hate this the most. It's the thing I hate the most. You're the second person to say that in this vlog this week. Yeah, because it's a dirty trick. It's when you make someone think that you're going to take a picture, but it's a video. So they're just sitting there looking like a fucking dumbass, just like... New vlog. Fidget spinner tricks. <laughs> Alright, here's this one. The handoff. The handy. <laughs> Who is doing this? Me? Jarvis, you have to explain to me why. Because I can. There is no God. That's my head. Bye. So I'm here with my friend Quinn at the site of what should be the Naruto run, but no one is here, so I'm not sure what's going on. At least one person is here for the run because they're wearing a headband. Are you here for the Naruto run? Yes, I am. Who is Naruto? One of the best anime figures of all time. How does one run like Naruto? Well, you put your head forward, arms back, and you let your legs do the work. What is your name? Hi, my name is Paige Dooley. Who is Naruto? Uh, Naruto uh, is a sweet, sweet ninja who lives in the Leaf Village, and we are here to do our best <laughs> imitation. You kind of crouch, and then you throw your arms back like this, and then you do and you run. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. Are you Naruto? Yes. <laughs> it's incredible to meet you. Naruto run changed you. After this run, I feel like my life has changed for the better, and all of my mental illnesses are gone. <laughs> and I feel like I feel like I can live again. How did watching the Naruto run affect you as a person? I'm not gonna lie, I didn't expect everybody to start running at me. <laughs> Beepus. What? Can you explain what we're doing? We're painting uh, bold and brash. Excuse me. Oh, I thought I was. You're not beepus. We're having a bold and brash painting party. What is that? Explain. It's a meme. Jojo, Jojo, Bordeaux and the Brasho got psycho almost done. Why? <laughs>